In this video I'm going to show how to repaint the top of a dryer. As you can see, sometimes they get rust marks and stains. Now the dryer I'm working on today is a Kenmore, um, but if you have a different make, uh, this will work as well. You just may have to use masking tape around uh, if your dryer doesn't come apart the same way, or a washer. Now my washer is in good condition, so I don't have to do this, but uh, if you're do repainting a washer, um, what I would do is just mask around here with uh, tape and plastic going to the floor and then uh, do the same thing with the control panel, lift it up, or you could put tape across and then put uh, plastic to cover that up. Uh, what I would do is leave the lid down, give it a light sanding with 320 grid, and then uh, wipe it off and just paint that right over top, nice heavy coat, and that'll make that really look nice. If it's, if it's rusty in here at all, then you can mask that off and paint that as well. Remove your lint filter. Now, I already am servicing this dryer, so that's why there's a hole in here. But otherwise, there will be two screws. Take those two screws out. Okay, with the lint filter removed, now I want to take off these sides, just grab from the bottom. Just be gentle. They have clips on them. So you just don't want to break those clips off. Just be very gentle taking these off to expose the screws. Remove the screws. There's a screw here on this side, as well as a screw over here on this side. And these are a uh, Phillips screw. And same with the other side. Okay, once you have the two screws removed, grab the control panel, pull towards you, or the front of the dryer, and then slowly lift back. Be careful, be careful of any wires, and you can just let it hang at the very back here. And of course, there's dust. You want to clean all that up. If you use the sandpaper on it right now, you probably gum up the sandpaper with any debris that's already on the dryer. So what I like to do is just get any all-purpose cleaner. This is Purple Power that you can mix. Purple Power cleaner. Any anything will work. Fantastic with a little bit of water. Get it as clean as possible. All the edges. Okay, once that's dry, you want to get some sandpaper. Now, what I usually start off with is uh, 220 grid sandpaper, and then after that, I will use 320. But if you just have 320, you can use 320. You don't want to go too aggressive because then once you paint it, you'll see the lines of uh, what you've scratched up. So you just want the paint to adhere to it. So a 320 is good, or if all you have is a 220, 220 will work as well. Um, so here we go. And you want to sand in one direction. Just back and forth. edges and the corners, but try not to hit the rest of the body if you're not painting that area. Okay, so with the 220 grid, you can tell that I've gotten the marks down. Now, where anywhere you have really deep gouges, you really want to spend the time and, and grind that down and get it really smooth. Otherwise, you'll see the scratches, light scratches after you paint it. So just get everything down and make sure that it's all smooth all the way around. Okay, and then once you got it all down, you can go over with the 320 grid, same direction, back and forth. Just go over it lightly. This will get rid of any of the, rid of any of the 220 grid uh, scratches that you might have left. Okay, with everything done, all the sanding done, um, best thing to do is take some solution on a microfiber towel if you have one, and just go over everything and get all the dust off. So what you can do is you can go around with masking tape around here, put plastic all down. I have an easier way of doing it. I like to take this panel and pop it and then put a piece of cardboard underneath. It works a lot better. What you want to do is grab from the back, push forward, and then pull off the clips. Like that. OK, 
Okay, and then that'll expose that, and then we'll grab a piece of cardboard. So now we're, we don't have to worry about getting the rest of the cabinet on any paint. You still have to be careful um, to not get overspray, but this is a lot easier than taping everything off. With a little plastic, I'm just going to cover the control panel. Okay, now this is the best stuff that I use, and uh, it's the only stuff that I know of, and it works really good. It's uh, Rust-Oleum. Um, you can buy it up at Home Depot or I think any painting store would probably have it. It's it's designed for appliances, washers, dryers. And, uh, it, it dries very nicely. So I'll show you a tip. Uh, watch to the end of the video and I'll show you what I do to make this shine. What I usually like to do is start with the edges. Nice thick coat. You know, just like we sanded, it's easier, it's better just to go back and forth, keep on one line in the middle. Nice, even, thicker coat. Now it's a good idea to open a door, of course, and uh, wear proper ventilation when doing this. to the top, I just work my way back down again, cover up any spots that you might see. Be careful not to get any runs. Okay, so the tip I have here, what I found with this stuff is it's better to do a thicker coat, not so thick that you're going to get runs, but do a thicker coat and don't do a second coat. Because if you do a second coat, you en it ends up not very looking very good. You get like an orange peel and you can tell that it's, it looks like it's been spray bombed. So my best results have come with laying it on really thick, making, making sure you do the prep first with the sandpaper, getting all the dust off, and then doing one thick coat and, um, and leaving it at that and let it dry overnight. The other thing is make sure there's no fans going or anything because you don't want to create any dust. Uh, let this cure for at least a day, I would, uh, before putting the panel back together. Okay, so it's been the next day here now. All the paint is dry. Uh, it looks really good. It's really shiny and uh, smooth. So I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to show you how to uh, reassemble. Okay, the first thing is put this down. There's clips. Just push down on them. That'll clip that back in. So you'll notice there's plastic clips on the bottom here. We've got to get these into the hole. If this falls out, make sure you put that in there. That's instructions if somebody needs to do repairs. Okay, with those in the holes, just push forward, make sure that's in, and then push back. Okay, and let's add the screws. Okay, now with the screws on, we now put the end caps on. Best way I find with this is to start with the bottom. Just be very gentle, you don't want to break it. And then just snap in. Just like that. Now, of course, you'd have to replace the two screws here. You'd have to replace the two screws there, and then put your lint filter back in. Now, like I said before, it's better to just one heavy coat of paint. Uh, if you just do one coat, it'll turn out better, believe me, than doing a second coat, unless you want to sand it all down again lightly and then reapply another coat. You can do that and then leave it. And that concludes this video on how to repaint a dryer top. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and the subscribe here.